Okay? So, let's get started. Anybody have any questions before we do this? Let's get to work. Yeah? Cool, awesome. So, can you guys see this? I'm gonna be doing it with you. Yeah? Let's do the back, cap, good. All right, so everybody have a calculator on their phones? This is a good time to bring it up. <laughs> and I have a couple in the office too. If you didn't bring it up. Can we share one? <laughs> yeah.
small motor function, you're more or less starving. So your body says, oh, slow all the processes down. So let's say we all lost our jobs today. You're going to go on a savings budget tomorrow, correct? Because you just don't know what money's going to come in. So your body kind of goes, Bleh. and holds on to your life and says, okay, well, can we cut the cable bill, right? And maybe we don't need to go out for dinner this week. And you start to make cuts. And you start to make cuts. And then the more that your resting metabolic rate lowers, you cut things out, cut things out. And if you go too far, too extreme, crazy crash diets, not bad counter soup diets and the like, right? Your resting metabolic rate is going to plummet. And it's tough to bring that guy back up. That's called the metabolic slow syndrome. Anybody heard that? Metabolic slow or any buzzwords, blah, 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 blah. But your metabolism can really get hit hard in about 30 days. And it takes about six to nine months to recover. <sighs> so when our clients, our chronic dieters come in, they go, well, I've been eating 1,100 calories for the last 30 days, and I'm not losing weight. Well, that's because your body's adjusting to only burn and use 1,100 calories. So that's why they go, okay, well, if I'm losing weight at 1,100, you're going to lose weight more at 1,000 and 900. And then your metabolism just goes with you. And all of a sudden, you're eating as little as possible, but you're still maybe maintaining or heck, gaining. Who's that? Right? It's kind of like, oh, I plateau at 1,700 calories. I'll go 1,600. Lose a pound, then plateau. So you drop to 50. You lose a pound, plateau, drop to 40. That's your resting metabolic rate getting really pissed at you. Okay, so let's keep those functions high. If you eat just above your resting metabolic rate, that's kind of your accelerated weight loss level. So let's do it. So that's your body weight times 11. Rocket, guys. Everybody got it? So your accelerated weight loss. How long could we probably do that before your resting metabolic starts to suffer? Any guesses? Pardon? Yeah, about a few weeks, about four weeks for the typical person. Four weeks before you start to cut, before you cancel the cable bill. Right, before you kind of cut some stuff out. So it's accelerated, but you're on a fine line. You're on a very, very fine line. That would be aggressive diet. Aggressive. Okay. But steady weight loss is body weight times 12. What did it do? Steady weight loss is sustainable weight loss. And I actually should say sustainable fat loss. Because at this mark, you still have potential to maintain lean body mass. Okay? You don't really have much potential to gain in body mass because you're not in a surplus, but you have the potential to maintain the muscle that you have and the skeletal structure that you have. Make sense? So that's the kind of like the good zone, the harad zone. If you're thinking about, I want to go into a weight loss plan for 12 weeks, 12 months, that's kind of the number that you should be roughly for. Okay? On a daily kind of plan. Some days maybe a little bit up, some days a little bit low. You don't have to hit these calories perfectly every single day. Your body's smarter than that. Your body kind of thinks in macro cycles. So in like five day segments or seven day segments. So if you like to cycle foods, if you like to have cheap meals, if you like to have different foods, this is a great number to hit times seven and that's your weekly calories. Let's do that, let's make a little side thing. So take your Steady weight loss number, EW max times 12, times it by seven, and that's what's called your seven day macro cycle.
Anybody heard of like calorie cycling, carb cycling, fat cycling, that kind of stuff? It's usually not like hardcore restrictive. And it doesn't mean that you're cutting out the entire macro, but you're cycling it through. So for instance, I try to gain weight half a year and I try to lose weight half a year. I go on carb cycling diets that are in a surplus. Make sense? So just because I'm carb cycling doesn't mean I'm in a deficit. I'll take my macros for the whole week, divide it into seven, say, okay, this day I'm gonna be 3,000 calories, but this day I'm only gonna be 2,200. This day I'm gonna be three, this day I'm gonna be 2,000. But then at the end of the week, my numbers is sync. Cool? Any questions on that one, guys? That's kind of fun if you wanna, if you wanna play around with days. Because, no joke, your Monday, Friday, way different than a Saturday, Sunday, right? <laughs> on a long weekend, your Monday and your Friday? Yeah, on your check, yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh, but, even, but even honestly, like, um, long weekends or days that you work out, so you might be a little bit more hungry. Rock and roll. Adjust, right? Adjust, it's not so scary, guys. Besides Ryan and Keats, maybe, anybody gain, trying to gain, steady? You, probably? Are they trying to gain a little bit of muscle mass right now? Oh, yeah, a little bit of muscle mass. Yeah? Who else is trying to gain a little bit of muscle mass? Right. Yeah, you. Okay. Yeah, so this is um, this is your number if you really want to accelerate the muscle gain. Okay? But you will, when you gain muscle, it's more or less a miracle if you don't gain body fat at the same time. You have to be okay with that. You really do. You want to keep the body fat compared to the lean body mass gain as minimal as possible. That's through effective training, right? And keeping the calories that you do eat, even if they're higher, just really as clean as possible, right? So write this guy down, just in case. Right, Ryan, put that one down. So muscle gain, body weight pounds times 50. And then we'll move. Cool, before we move on to things called macronutrients, any questions on that first baseline caloric state? Yeah, clear as mud. Anybody have weird wacky numbers that they didn't think possible? Or they all kind of ballparkish? Like within 100 calories or so? Yeah? Nobody? Do you have any questions? Keeps? Higher than you thought? Yeah. Remember guys that this is this is just kind of, just the nutrition part. So we're not talking about training, we're not talking about party or anything else like that. We're just talking kind of the nutrition. So this is in theory that you also are working out on top of this. Whether it's one day a week, two days a week, five days a week, it doesn't matter, okay? But anybody have any big questions on that? No? Nope. Okay, so this is where it can get customized for you, but we're gonna go with a really cool, simple formula. So we're going to divide your calories into a certain amount of proteins, a certain amount of carbohydrates, and a certain amount of fats. Those three things are called macronutrients. They're the big kahunas. Okay? And then things called micronutrients are like vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, amino acids, that kind of stuff. Okay? But we're going to divide them into macros. Now, this is where it can be unique and customized to you and how you feel off certain foods. But a good average macro split is about 40% proteins, 40% carbs, and 30% and then the remainder of the veggies, veggies are carbs, and then fats at 20. So we're gonna go on a 40, 40, 20 split. Okay? So for instance, like an Atkins diet that has less than 10% carbohydrates. The zone diet or Mediterranean diet would be like 33, 33, 33. A high protein diet would be 50% proteins. You can fiddle with stuff, but the 40, 40, 20 is a nice flight. And the reason being is because the calories are pretty split down the middle. Because when we have a protein, one gram of protein has four calories. One gram of carb has four calories. One gram of fat has nine calories. So if we do a 40, 40, 20 split, the grams and the serving sizes for fat might be lower, but the caloric content that we consume is about the same. Yeah? Yeah, but I just have, I have 30% in here, and then we're just gonna use the remainder for veggies. 
Because I don't really, I don't care about counting veggies. Really. Like, if you're if you're measuring your veggies, you got you got big issues. <laughs> Rock and roll. So I just use like I just fill the ten percent. Go ahead. And like honestly, the benefits far away the the disasters. Any questions on that, guys? So those are what macronutrients are. Now let's do it. Let's take the total calories of whatever formula that you want to do, whether it's muscle gain, steady weight loss, accelerated weight loss, maintenance, whatever your goals are, take the total amount of calories and times 0.4. There's a lot of volume in 10% veggies. Is 
there a certain time of day that she should just say, okay, I've got Oh, like when you're done? Yeah. Uh, not really. So there's, there was some science behind that, like studies in the 80s and 90s that you got to like stop eating at 6. Total, kind of total calories in the whole day are more important than when you eat. And then it's the quality of calories, right? Kind of they're 50 50, and then it's kind of spread out. For, it's honestly digestion. If you're eating 2,000 calories a day and you eat it all in one meal, you're only digesting a little bit. So you're still going to be freaking hungry. You're not going to have good bowel function. You're not going to have good hydration. You're not going to have a whole bunch of things. So even though 2,000 calories came in, your micronutrients and your absorptions, not nah, right? So sometimes we have you know, big mac and fries and that's 1,900 calories. And if you spread that over a day, you're <coughs> satisfied. You can have an hour and be hungry in 45 minutes, right? So total calories, quality of calories, timing of calories is least important because there's not a universal study that tells you like, stop eating at six. Because Keith might be an evening eater, right? He might not be able to eat in the morning. He might want to eat everything in the morning. Maybe he's more active in the morning. Right, so there's not anything like that. Personal, 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 okay? So now we're gonna divide it into plates, guys. We are gonna make food plates. So this is what we're gonna be doing. We're having five meals a day. We have five servings of protein, we're gonna have five servings of veggies, we're gonna have fruit three times a day, I'm gonna shoot for about two to three liters of water a day. Again, adjust accordingly for you. But if you can hit all these things, you're fine. All right, what are we gonna do? So I call the meals fun things so they're easy to remember. Okay, so we're gonna have things called power meals. Those are our bigger meals. And then we're gonna have things called ignition meals. So, a power meal contains a serving of fruits, a lean protein, some veggies, or whatever the hell you want, and some starch. Okay? We're going to have a few meals in that a day. We're going to have a few ignition meals, a couple of ignition meals. We're going to have some fats, another lean protein, and we're going to have a lot of veggies. We're going to have some colored veggies and some green vegetables. Why are we doing that? Why are we having a mixture of colored vegetables and green vegetables? Pardon? Yeah, so these tomatoes are really good on the plates. No. But remember those things I told you guys with micronutrients? So certain fruit and certain vegetables contain certain micronutrients. But not one piece of fruit or not one type of fruit or type of vegetable contains all the vitamins and minerals that you need. So you might be thinking that you're kicking ass taking names by having six servings of spinach every day, seven days in a row. You're gonna be really good on the nutrients that spinach has and in a super big deficit on the ones that doesn't. And your body will start to have cravings. Even if you're eating really good food, if your variety of food is super low, your body kind of tricks you into eating the things that it wants, right? So if you need chromium, Sometimes, or you, you need magnesium sometimes. You kind of want chocolate, right? Or there's certain things you kind of want fats, right? There's certain things you're like, yeah, I need meat right now, right? Like, oh, I need some dairy, probably calcium, right? There's certain things that your body says, hey, last time I ate that, I got that. I don't know what the hell ice cream was, but when I had it, I digested it, and I got what I needed, right? So it's kind of like a kid. I kind of knows the buttons to push. So we are going to split up your vegetables. We're going to make one day nutrition plan on this. But you can do this nutrition plan over and over and over and over and over again and mix it up all the time. But I'm, not, I'm just going to force you to have colored vegetables twice a day. This is so easy to have greens. You need some peppers. You need some tomatoes. You need some different colored carrots. Like this. Cool? Yes? All right. Let's do it. Do it, do it. I'm going to zoom out here. There we go. So we're gonna have three power meals and three ignition meals. And it seems confusing, but it's not. Start with your protein, take some five servings, put in the number that is the, the vision of the five. 
So if you have a 200 serving of protein, or 150 calories serving of protein, you're going to put that in on the five slots that it says protein. Yes? Did I butcher something? No? You can, no, yes, put the number first, and then we'll put the, the actual food that you're having. Because then we have food with some back. Right? So take up half the line, put 150. Or 120, or 100, or 250, or 300 if you run. Yeah, is it right around three? Yeah. That make sense, guys? So take the proteins, that number, we divide by five, put those answers in your proteins. Yeah, yeah. and then we'll choose food after. When you're done with proteins, move on to your fats, or sorry, your carbs. And then take those six, divide them in between starch and fruit. So you have six servings of carbs, guys. Divide them into fruit, 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 carb, carb, carb. Yeah?
right? Veggies, fruits, that kind of stuff. Choose any protein that you want. Throw it in beside that number. So if you want 200 calories of whey protein in the morning, throw it in. If you want 200 calories of turkey at your snack, your first ignition meal, throw it in. You want egg whites, egg holes, throw it in. Round up, round down. Yep. Yes, you're Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Hey. See, 
buy really don't care about fruit and veggies? <laughs> Just don't eat more than three servings of fruit a day. Yeah. And it's not so much the the calorie content, it's just the sugar content. Yeah. So when I eat a booster, like the power, the power, the Yeah. Yeah. Bang on. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, you can rearrange. Like I have them in that sort. Mainly I have the, the carbs left out the second and fourth meal. Just to more or less give your blood sugars a break and to get you back into and at least the non minutes. So sweet on science there for a minute. But if you have too many starches throughout the day, your insulin levels will just be really high. For them to the worse. Right? Throughout the day, this can burn essential fatty acids as fuel. If insulin is present. It's always going to use insulin first, fatty acids second. Right? So it's kind of like eating the fresh fruits in the drawer versus the frozen stuff. Your body's going to grab whatever most convenient and whatever is easiest to do. It's an efficient machine. So if there is insulin there, it converts super easy into energy, essential fatty acids, it takes more. Okay? So if you're carb sensitive, insulin sensitive, or insulin restrictive, if you can't, like, that's why sometimes people will carb cycle. Or they'll have more carbs before and after a workload instead of spread out throughout the day. And there's guys like me, they're total jerks, and I can eat as many carbs as I want. <laughs> right? And then it's totally just the calories. I can have a whole meal all day, every day, and I'm not, I'm not sensitive to it. And there's guys that are like gluten intolerant and sensitive and whatever else, and they look at a french fry and explode. So it's just depending on you. Right? Uh, that's kind of a nice formula where I give you guys two breaks a day, or at least you're going to have about five to seven hours of food to live, but you're not going to have insulin at the top of your bloodstream and convert it over. All that silly science stuff is in all of our nutrition plans, but we don't have to find it. It's just there. Right? That's 100 years of experience to the team, and we don't tell you guys how many calories you're eating or whatever, because it's a lot funner just to grab a recipe, and a lot easier to grab a recipe that says, you know, chicken fajitas than to do this for every meal, right? There's a lot of science in you guys' nutrition plans. This is the science, to an extent. We go a little bit more into like macro cycling and more. Like in the six week nutrition manual, every single week has a macro cycle and a different objective. So you might have 50% carbs in your power weeks, which you do. And in your initial weeks, you might have only 30%. Your detoxes, you might have 25%, right? Your kickstart 